Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the fourth lecture of uh, bioenergetics of life processes. So, in the previous class, we discussed about the iron sulfur world, and I gave you three different examples of uh, electron transport proteins where iron sulfur's presence is very prominent. And as a matter of fact, we systematically discussed about the Gunther Wachterhauser's theory of iron sulfur world and why that theory is um, fairly lucrative or kind of uh, very appealing for us uh, in the sense that whenever we see the cellular structures of modern day, current day cellular structures, we observe most of the energy transduction processes are carried out by these iron sulfur complexes or iron sulfur clusters. They are the one which allows the electron to move through from one spot to another. All the short distance electron transfer, long distance electron transfer happens through these iron sulfur chains or iron sulfur wares or iron sulfur cluster. It almost forms as if like if you look at uh, the iron sulfur clustering, if you look at it very carefully from a perspective it will almost it will look like something like a iron sulfur wares as if these are the molecular wear of iron and sulfur. So, from there today what we will do we will discuss about so we talked about in the last class about the self assembly of uh, possible self assembly of the iron sulfur compounds to form a confined structure which acted as a template for further organic uh, synthesis by an organic synthesis much more complex molecules of assembling the carbohydrates and all and possibly on the network of iron sulfur our lecture 4 of 20. Okay. So, essentially on the base of these iron sulfur compounds, if we construct this, okay. something like this, what we drew in the last class. On the base of this, we assembled a lot of carbon, nitrogen, carbon, nitrogen molecules and it is believed that this framework of iron sulfur cluster acted as a template. framework acted as a template for evolution of complex cellular membrane and today whenever we looked at today's cellular structure we observe the remnants of those iron sulfur which are sitting in between the proteins. So, if you look at the modern day cellular structure it is something like this say for example <coughs> we have lipid bilayer. So, lipid bilayer is something like this okay. You see a cellular structure with a nucleus in the center you have the mitochondria which is 
will be dealing with you have chloroplast in the plant cell and if you look at the membrane so membrane is something like this a lipid bilayer structure with polar head groups of lipids but in between you see a lot of those huge protein moieties sitting like this right and if you look at those protein moieties one salient feature which will emerge and of course these protein moieties have a lot of uh, carbohydrate embedded in them as signaling molecules and one interesting feature which will emerge out here is they will have these most of them if they are electron transport or any kind of they will have this iron sulfur. So now if you try to place your imagination in place thinking about a room which was initially formed a room in the sense a cell which was initially formed of iron sulfur on top of this over billions of years of evolution the proteins or the complex amino acids, complex lipids, complex carbohydrate have synthesized as a template. So they now engulf the whole thing and it kind of developed a very unique geometry which we see today. But from here to here, this journey is a time travel. A time travel of few billions of years and there are in between there are lot lot of untold stories unexplored stories which are hidden in the very core of nature and that's what makes this subject so very interesting to understand that you know there are so many hidden stories about which we have absolutely no clue. We all are hunting in the dark to figure out one of those beautiful stories which may have happened over billions of years of journey of who we are today. Now, coming back, if you look at the modern day cell and even the cellular structure, the cell itself could be classified into to, so essentially a cell which got formed have few unique characteristics which okay by the way having said this before I can come to the cellular structure what we do not know how the cell learn to replicate and when from this chemical world when from chemoevolution we move to the DNA RNA world and we do not even know whether proteins or amino acids, amino acids or proteins came earlier or how they kind of you know developed a relation between them. These are all untold, unexplored, unknown stories of nature. We know they are there, how they have evolved over billions of years, we do not know. We just have one thing, speculations. And we are speculating. So whenever I was ta talking to you about these proteins which are present there, which are mostly in this case we are talking about the membrane proteins, we have no clue how these membrane proteins really evolved there. Or as a matter of fact, any protein evolved there. If possibly in this soup, in primitive pizza, amino acids are formed, but how they learn to have a peptide bond forming and where they set up a link with DNA and the RNA world. 
we do not know these things. And what was the template even for the DNA to form? What we know is a modern day cell like this. And within this cell, if you look at it, this is even much more interesting. So we do not know how it learned to replicate and when from this whole DNA world really came into existence. But what we know, the modern day cell has developed few unique features and those unique features are what we are going to talk about. It has a one, it has a semi permeable membrane and it has so in terms of semi permeable membrane i'm again drawing the cellular structure if this is the cellular structure which is if this is the membrane we are talking about a lipid bilayer membrane and you have the embedded iron sulfur proteins, iron sulfur clusters out there. So, and you have these <coughs> carbohydrate popping out. So, this biological cell allows only selective things to, you know, flow across it. It is semi permeable. One aspect of this, second aspect of this, this is asymmetric in nature. In other word, this side, so if this is the outer side and this is the inner compartment, the faces, this side, this face, now I am putting the opposite color. The chemical nature of this face is different from the outer face. So that offers it an asymmetric existence. This is what we call as asymmetry in nature. So, cell membrane is asymmetric, cell membrane is semi permeable and the last thing what we are not dealing here is a cell can replicate which we have talked but we are not dealing with it at this stage because that is not our criteria or this is not we are dealing in this course. Okay. And there is across this membrane all the cells maintain a unique potential difference. In other words, there is a third property we are getting into of the cell which is the inner and outer composition of the cell is different in terms of inorganic salt. In terms of inorganic salts. So, if you compare from inner and outer, you will observe that outside the cell you have very high sodium and chloride whereas as compared to inside you had low sodium chloride but inside you have high potassium outside you have low potassium and inside you have store of calcium in calcium storage.
which is high, but you are not seeing calcium as free floating. Apart from it, within this, so one unique feature of what has emerged in the modern day cellular structure is that all the structures which are there, what we will be talking about here, they are all double membranous structure, even within this. So now if we look inside, if we start looking inside it with our two organelle of major interest, which is chloroplast and mitochondria will observe the same feature as we observed in the individual cell. So if you look at the mitochondria, the chloroplast, in the case of mitochondria, you will observe, I am showing the cross sections, so it is kind of, we draw it like this, but then when you show the cross section, it is something like this. This is half cut structure of mitochondria and what you will observe is something like this. This half cut structure is essentially telling you, so this is the inner membrane and in the red, okay. Inner membrane, whereas this blue line, what I am drawing now, is showing you the outer membrane and uh, if you look at the cell, you are realizing that this cell dimension, if we talk about say, you know, this is say, you know, 25 to 30 micron and within 25 to 30 microns, we are talking about a structure which are probably 1 micron and this is the structure of mitochondria or chloroplast what I am talking about. This is possibly even 1 micron or less. This is how small these are, but yet what is important to realize it, these structures are also exactly following the same geometry or same consilience you can say, if I, if I look at it, they are semi permeable, they are asymmetric in nature and these also can replicate, mitochondria can replicate and inner and outer composition of the cell or organelle, now I am introducing, is different in terms of inorganic salt and in terms of proteins. So you see one interesting thing and of course the last one, yeah, we will we'll come to that. So similarly, if you look at the structure of the chloroplast, you will observe a very similar, similar stuff in the structure of the chloroplast. That is, this is how the chloroplast structure looks like. These are thylakoid membranes out there. And uh, this is that outer membrane of chloroplast. So, I am just showing the cross section. So, this is the inner core of the chloroplast, okay. This is inner membrane, this is outer membrane and these are the thylakoid membranes or the structure and the stroma and likewise. And again, if you look at the chloroplast, it follows the same asymmetric paradigm, okay. So, I will close in here. In the next class, we will talk about some of the basic thermodynamical feature, what you needed to know, okay. Thank you.